Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. We're here with some NFL DFS picks and lineup advice for tonight's single game showdown slate. Monday Night Football, San Francisco 49ers, Los Angeles Rams, divisional matchup. Here to give you all the tips you need. Injuries that impact the slate, lineup construction tips, low risk, high risk contests, general tips, everything you need for tonight's single game showdown slate. Welcome. I'm Brian Jester, co-founder here at Occupy Fantasy, single game million dollar winner. If you're not already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Get notified when we go live, upload these showdown videos twice per week. Give us a thumbs up. Let's us know that we should continue these. You like them. We should continue to do them. Any questions you have, comment on the video below. Or join our Discord server, occupyfantasy.com slash Discord, to chat with other members of the community. Before we get into this, really quickly, NBA preseason has started. Our NBA preseason daily plug, where we outline playing time notes, uh, expectations, rankings for DraftKings. That will go live today for the NBA preseason. Very profitable time. Uh, so OccupyFantasy.com for more information on that. All right. Rams, 49ers. Let's get into it. Uh, Cooper Cup, Debo Samuel, two field favorites. When both these guys are playing each other the field, it's conflicted. They don't know who to play. Uh, so when in doubt, just play the most expensive guy. And that's Cooper Cup. And the field is going to build pretty similarly tonight and we have a pretty good idea how they're going to build on FanDuel and DraftKings which is always the first step in attacking these contests uh, and let's start with low risk right 50 50s double ups head to heads just have to beat half the field in our showdown guide which hopefully you've read by now uh, on OccupyFantasy.com where we talk about all the back tested data what usually wins showdown contests different strategies in low risk contests we talk about locking up all the scoring or playing values right and locking up all the scoring means playing both quarterbacks, both running backs. That generally means if touchdowns are scored, you have them in your lineup. However, that's a little difficult tonight for a couple of reasons. Uh, anytime you have a stud on the slate, or two studs in this sense, who are uh, opportunity hogs like Cup and Samuel, Samuel uh, that changes that, the dynamic a little bit. Especially when you consider Debo Samuel projects to score more points than his own quarterback, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo because of Debo's rushing and receiving role. So it makes the, the traditional showdown strategy pretty difficult. But instead, we could just play the highest projected guys, play the highest values. Uh, Cooper Cup, Debo Samuel, we could play Matthew Stafford, sure. Um, Jeff Wilson has been dominating opportunity uh, since Eli Mitchell went down in week one. So Jeff Wilson has a great role here. He, he certainly qualifies as a lockup all the scoring candidate. Jimmy G does not. You see him averages 13.6 points per start. But there are two values that allow you to fit everything in tonight. Uh, the first one is Tyler Higby, $5,200. And normally we're not into $5,200 tight ends. Uh, most of the time these guys end up sub 20%. If you've been playing showdown all season, you know this. However, Higby's role has been insane. Where he's had, uh, he just had four targets last week against Arizona. But that was kind of a weird game script. But nine targets the week before, 11 targets in week one. Uh, has been really the number two guy in this offense, despite them signing Allen Robinson in the offseason. So Higby, at his projected volume, really underpriced at 5,200. The other guy, and he's not like a slam dunk play by any means, but it's Jawan Jennings, the wide receiver three for San Francisco, who, again, if you're not a 49ers fan, or if you're not a showdown or NFL degenerate, you probably don't even know who Jawan Jennings is. And that's fair. Right, but when you get two plus targets per game at 2K, that's going to be a popular play when nobody else in that range is really guaranteed that type of volume. Now, again, Jennings not going to score 15, 20 points, but in low risk contests, if he scores what? If he scores these one to 10 points, that's enough for us to be able to fit in Cup and Debo and Stafford. That's huge, and he'll be extremely popular popular in low risk contests. He'll be extremely popular in small field contests. Uh, so just keep that in mind and what he allows you to do with your lineup. Now, FanDuel, obviously, it's always trickier, right? If we try to fit in the top three, we're not going to play Jimmy G here. It's the same concept with, with Debo's rushing ability. Uh, 6,500 per player, right? That's a little tougher. Nobody in the 6,500 range is super underpriced. Like maybe you play Kyle Juszczyk. Now, now you're still looking for a $7,500 guy. Maybe Juwan fits here. But it's not like DraftKings. So the FanDuel low-risk strategy tonight is a little harder We've been pretty fortunate the past couple of slates. We've had a pretty easy low risk approach. Not tonight. You have to make some tough decisions on which of these three you have to fade. You can only play two of Cup, Stafford, and Debo. Uh, and uh, that's pretty difficult to do. So advise against playing low risk contests tonight. But if you do, you have to pick between these guys. Honestly, you could probably, I think it'll be relatively popular compared to most showdown slates where there's zero quarterbacks. People want to play Cup, they want to play Samuel. So this would be the, if they have to choose between those three, they'll choose these two. Uh, so uh, just keep that in mind. That's probably the safer, from an ownership perspective, low-risk play. 
but uh, it, it's not easy at all tonight. So just stick to high risk contests over on FanDuel. Which, speaking of high risk contests, leagues, satellites, GPPs, large field, and small field. Tonight, we obviously have the two values on DraftKings. Let's go back over there, right? And let's clear this out. Let's put in the two values. We have Higby, 5,200. Jawan Jennings, 2K. And when we have two standout values, guys that are going to be more popular by a decent margin than other players in their pricing range, the first high-risk strategy that comes to mind is just pivoting away from them and not playing them in your high-risk contest. And either A, playing someone that's similar in price that projects a little lower but can easily outscore them at much, uh, much lower ownership. Or you play a different line of construction that doesn't utilize that salary range. And in that case, Jennings can still score 10 points, but because of the way you played your lineup, he doesn't even matter. He's not even in the optimal. So two different strategies there. If we go with the first one, where we play pivots, and let's talk about Tyler Higby first, $5,200 range. So maybe, what, 4K to 6K range, guys we're talking about here. So that includes kickers and defenses, obviously. They're going to be a little less popular than they have been over the past two weeks, especially the kickers who've been crushing. We've seen kickers eclipse 30, sometimes even 40% ownership in some contests. Won't be the case tonight. These guys will barely hover around 20%, I think. Uh, the, the field always finds a way to play them. I'm not sure if that's the case tonight. We'll see. These are two popular kickers, so maybe they do get above 20%. Um, but instead, you have defenses who won't be as popular. Skoranek, who's been playing a decent amount of snaps, playing this weird tight end, fullback, wide receiver role, not getting a ton of targets. If we open up his game laws, not like a super target heavy type of guy. But even if we do play him, he could outscore Higby if Higby gets his four targets again, doesn't get in the end zone. Not sure why this is taking so long to load. Uh, but Skoranek is a guy that will be sub 20% that could outscore Higby. So is Allen Robinson. Obviously, you have to go a little higher here. There's, there's Skoranek finally. Let's see. Four, three, and six targets. It's not dramatically different from Higby. Yes, less in the first two weeks, but the same amount of targets as last week. So he could easily outscore Higby at probably half the ownership. That's probably the best direct pivot on DraftKings from Tyler Higby. Okay? Or you play a lineup that doesn't include this mid-range. Right? You play more 6K guys. You play a super cheap guy. Jennings at 2K, if we're playing for someone to outscore him, uh, basically have all part-time players. Brandon Powell has gotten some targets, some design plays. 5 to 15 snaps on offense. Not a ton, but when you're on the field and they're designing plays for you, that can certainly help you outscore someone like Jennings. Braver McLeod getting on the field again. Kendall Blanton, only five snaps last week. Probably more of just a large field tournament play. Hope he gets into the end zone. Jordan Mason, do they continue to run Jeff Wilson all these snaps? Mason, if you look last week, not a ton of touches. Figured he would get more as the running back too uh, with uh, Tyrion Davis-Price out of the picture. Maybe he gets more tonight. Just saying, the internet is, is bugging today. But let's just assume Mason gets a couple carries. He can outscore Jawan Jennings. And obviously the favorite play in this price range, who is always an option on 49ers showdown slates, that's going to be, okay, here's finally Jordan Mason. Thanks. Uh, just one attempt last week, like five snaps. He's got to get more, I would imagine. But again, not someone you probably play in the small field. The small field, large field, whatever pivot is probably a use check, who... Uh, will get a rushing attempt from time to time, does get some goal line work, will get a target or two, design plays for him. It's not like your regular fullback who's always in the flat, let's dump it out to him. Design plays for Juszczyk, very dynamic, down the field. You saw his 24-yard catch last week, toes happy in the sideline, excellent athlete. So Juszczyk, again, normally checks in 8 to 12% ownership on these showdown slates when there's no, uh, when there are obvious values like, like Jawan Jennings. So it's going to be half the ownership. You check definitely the favorite large field tournament, small field tournament play. Even save some more salary uh, compared to, to Jennings 2K. So probably our favorite play in that range. Now, FanDuel, before we close out this uh, this video, the rare case where wide receiver is going to be the most popular MVP more than likely, Cooper Cup, and then Stafford, and then Debo. And they're going to eclipse, they're going to carry 90% of the ownership, probably 80% of the ownership. Jimmy G barely going to be played at all, period. Not even just MVP, but flex as well. Can a quarterback get there on FanDuel? Yes, we see it every single slate. Can Jimmy G get there? I don't know. He's got to outscore Debo. Has to outscore one of Cup or Stafford. And it's possible. So, again, when we have a quarterback that's going to be 5% MVP, maybe less, 25% overall, maybe less, you have to play those guys. It's not like a backup who's stepping in and is terrible. Jimmy G is a proven starter in this league. Not a great quarterback but enough for fantasy to score 15 points in a single matchup. 
Uh, always going to go overweight in large field contests on quarterbacks that are 25% on FanDuel. Doesn't pan out very often, but it definitely pans out more often than the field plays it. So ways to get different. If you play Cup, you play Debo, uh, pair him up with a quarterback, play zero quarterbacks, leave some salary on the table. Some of those guys we talked about on DraftKings, those lower price players, mix one of them in. Because when you have 30 40% MVPs, it's a little harder to get different. Uh, make some weird lineups tonight. Typical correlation rules go out the window a bit when you have target hogs like Cup, uh, hybrid roles like Debo Samuel. So don't be as confined to the typical correlation showdown rules that you would make. This goes for DraftKings as well. You know, you have to play a quarterback uh, when there's a wide receiver captain. You have to play a quarterback, period. You have to leave X amount of salary. All those rules go out the window when you have a guy who has 80% of the team's opportunity and a guy who gets rushing attempts in the red zone and is one of the best receivers in the league as well. So... Those are your tips. Find the pivots. Leave some salary. Don't play your typical correlation rules. All right. That'll do it for this video. Appreciate you listening as always. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I've been saying this the last couple of weeks, but it's been sticking out to us when we look at the, the video analytics. More than 75% of you who watch these videos aren't subscribed. I'm guilty of this myself when I watch other channels and I always see it pop back up. I was like, oh man, I forgot about that. Yeah, because I'm not subscribed. Right? So just subscribe. Make sure you get notified. Six, seven videos per week. We got a ton of NBA content coming for the regular season if you're an NBA fan. So just make sure you're subscribed here on YouTube. Give us a thumbs up. If you enjoy the content and want to see more, helps the channel, lets us know about you. And any questions, always comment on the video. We'll be here through lock. Uh, I'll be checking the YouTube comments throughout the day. But if you want in-depth answers, you want other people's opinions, you want to sweat the games with us, join the Discord server, occupyfantasy.com slash Discord to chat with other members of the community. And our daily plug, rankings, uh, lineup construction tips, low-risk, high-risk contests, different a small field, you name it, everything you need for a showdown slate to crush it. Our writer, Bismo, does a great job. That's posted at 2, 3 p.m. Eastern. The link's in the description below. So be sure to check that later this afternoon after you watch this video. So that'll do it. Appreciate you. Brian Jester, Occupy Fantasy. Thanks for listening. 49ers, Rams, good luck.